I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 86, Carmageddon 64. Released in 2000, this game was developed by Software Creations and published by Titus. Oh god, Titus? That's the same people who did Superman 64! Well, I sure hope this one is better than that. I mean, it's not hard to be, but still. So I had never heard of this game, but a lot of my viewers seem to be familiar with it. I mean, based off the title alone, it seems like it's based on cars, right? Maybe Bruce Willis will make an appearance. Either way, whatever it is, I'm going to beat it. Let's get into it. The main menu just has the modes Carmageddon, Quick Start, and Head to Head. So Carmageddon is what I'll beat in this video. The first thing to do is pick our vehicle. We have so many choices on who to play as. Either Max Damage or Diana. Uh, I'm not really sure if it matters other than the look of the car. And finally, choose the race. There's a choice of Beaver City, Nice Beaver, Beaver County, Quarry Rocky 2, or Beaver City, City Slicker. Now, I went with Nice Beaver to start since it was listed first. Before starting, the game gives some lore about the game. June 6, 2026. There was a huge solar flare that caused everyone exposed to turn into zombies. So, uh, you got that coming up if you've been bored lately. Some people made it into climate safe zones to avoid the flare and the incoming zombie apocalypse. Some dudes got bored and decided to leave to have a chaotic race on an abandoned racetrack in Detroit. This eventually grew in popularity to have other races happening. The racers made sure to kill any zombies that got in their way, which ended up being a convenient solution to the zombie problem. This series of races became known as the Carmageddon. Then it cuts to the gameplay. It's a racing game, but it's definitely not a standard one. Right away, I turned a corner and ran over a few zombies. It popped up saying I got a bonus for killing them, which ended up being for the timer. If you run out of time, you lose. The track you race on is just kind of everywhere. There's no map telling you where to go and barely any indicators of where to go. So it's super easy to veer off course without even realizing it. The game doesn't tell you you're going the wrong way at all. Sometimes going the wrong way can be rewarding though. I veered off course a second time and ended up in this small room filled with all kinds of goodies. You can pick up things like more credits, time bonuses, or power-ups. However, the power-ups in this game are pretty much worthless. Like, I'm not joking, they don't do anything helpful. Then after that, I ended up in the water. I thought for sure this would be out of bounds and in my race or something like that, but nope. It just let me keep driving on the bottom. I realized I could press L to respawn. It costs a thousand credits to do it, and you can just kind of spam it, even if you don't have enough credits. I brought myself down to negative 22,000 credits. Like, come on, man. Along with power-ups, sometimes there are explosive traps laid along the ground. These damage your car, and if you lose all your health, it's game over for old max damage. Throughout the tracks, there are checkpoints every so often to give you a sense of progress. You might think these are very straightforward, but remember, it doesn't tell you when you've gone off the track. So if you happen to hit them out of whatever arbitrary order they're given, it just yells at you and says wrong checkpoint. Like how was I supposed to know it was the wrong one? After getting wrecked for about 20 minutes or so, I got fed up and checked the manual. It turns out there's three different ways to win every race. The first is just going through the race normally and coming in first place. The manual shames you for taking this route though. The second is to kill all zombies in a level. This is extremely hard because there's 80 in total and you can't miss a single one. Lots of them are hidden in secret areas, so uh, good luck with that. For this first race, I had attempted it enough to where I memorized the arbitrary route and won with first place. Well, next up, it's time to race in Beaver Quarry. Right away, I rammed into a wall and flipped over. I found myself going head to head with all the other racers. Quite the chaotic mess. I drove away, but the track just led into a gap that felt impassable. If the last track was tough to navigate, this one felt like that one painting with all the weird perspective staircases. You know the one. After getting hit with another wrong checkpoint, I was fed up. Somehow I made it to the end of all three laps with first place after a few tries. The third race is back to Beaver City again for some reason. I got first place in the race here after a few tries and it just sent me back to the character selection screen. Now for max damage there was a new thing available, Mission 1. 
When selecting it, it gave us green with some lore. Apparently, Max Damage has been challenged to run a track fast, and he really wants to win. Yeah, I know, really, really deep lore here. These missions are the actual interesting part of the game, as they're all unique. However, this first one is really bland in that you just have to run a race in a time limit. Lame. It was on the previous Beaver Quarry level, and I knocked the time out on the first try. After beating the mission, it unlocked three new races. It turns out the flow of this game is doing three races, then doing a mission, and then repeat. The races, as you can imagine, get quite repetitive. In total, there are 40 races. Yeah, that's right. It takes so long to do them all. What, with all the annoying vagueness and where to go and the janky driving physics leading to tons of crashes? There had to be a better way. Well, if you remember, I said there is three ways to win a race in Carmageddon. The third way is to kill all the other racers. If they're all dead, then you must be the winner, right? Luckily for me, this ended up being both the easiest and fastest way to win a race by a landslide. See, the AI and the other cars will tend to drive towards you. I think maybe they want to kill you too, but killing them is easy peasy. All you gotta do is get them in a corner, then back up and drive into them. Over and over and over until they finally blow up. When you do, it says you wasted them. You might think, hey, isn't this hurting my car too? Well, it is, but I can just repair it for a cost that is way less than what I gain from ramming other people. So I just did this for the other three racers to win every race easily. From this point on, I didn't really do much racing in these races. In fact, I didn't do any racing at all. My strat in literally every race was just get into a small area and ram the other people till they blew up. So from here on out, I'm only going to talk about the actual missions. Just remember that between each mission, I had to do three races and ram the other guys to unlock the next one. When you waste another driver, you get a choice of what to do with their vehicle after the race. You can repair, scrap, or sell it. If you repair it, it costs a lot of credits, but you unlock that vehicle to use for the future. So for mission two, the zombies have managed to turn on a bunch of satellites in the city. It's affecting the climate systems in the domes everyone is hiding out in, and the government needs me to destroy them. Should be easy, right? Well, it wasn't. This mission was so annoying. You spawn on a roof and there are ramps going off all the different roofs. Oh yeah, when you land a big jump, it rewards you with a cunning stunt bonus. Uh, make of that what you will. The annoying part is that if you make a mistake when going off a ramp and fall, there's literally no way back up. Maybe there is and I missed it, but I looked pretty hard. So the only option is to start the mission all over again. After a few attempts, I reached the first satellite. I just rammed it with the car and it blew up. There's 11 in all and I definitely did not get it on the first try. A big problem I was having is if I wasn't perfectly centered on the ramp, my car would kind of attach to the side of it. This lowered my speed drastically and I wasn't even close. Thankfully, it turns out you can use the respawn button to land back on the roof, but you have to make sure you do it before you land. This makes the level so much easier. The level is essentially a giant Carmageddon platformer. Frustratingly, I did blow up all 11 satellites beating this one. Brief aside to talk about the graphics and music in the game. The music's pretty decent. It's really loud and intense techno sounding stuff but the amount of songs is pretty limited, but I thought it fit the style of the game pretty well. The graphics, they're not good. <laughs> I think this is one of the worst looking games on the N64, honestly. So many of the textures just look bad, almost like some kind of free flash game on the PC. So now it's on to mission three. Some dude named Don Dumpsters challenges to a 1v1 Carmageddon. He's got a truck bigger than we've ever seen, but luckily for us, we've got the brains to beat him. Don is driving around in this big yellow thing with a spiky bulldozer pusher thing on the front. All this mission is is a battle to the death. Just have to blow old Donnie Dumpster up. It was annoying to try to hit them with that thing on the front, so I led him into a corner where a bunch of explosives were. He was an idiot and kept running over them. With that, I took him down easily. Now in mission four, apparently the world government had an oopsie and the military created a new strain of zombies that are radioactive. They've asked us to take care of it. If we don't kill all the new zombies within the time limit, it's bye bye humanity. So as you might guess, this mission required me to kill all the zombies in the level. Can't miss a single one. There's a hundred in total, so it was time to start hunting. 
Oh, speaking of power-ups being worthless, this one's making my car bounce randomly. Who the heck wants that? It seems in this mission the zombies weren't as hard to find as they are in the regular races. They were in all the places you might expect to look. I imagine the devs didn't want people to get stuck here and rage quit the game. Honestly, that would be a good idea to do, but not for me. I didn't have too much trouble with this one though. I had about 5 minutes to spare when I killed the last one. Mission 5 gets kind of weird. Well, weirder than things already are. Somehow our character got kidnapped and is being held prisoner at the fun fair. The zombies have formed a religious cult and the only way to escape obviously is convince them that we're a god. And how do we do that? By running over all the mines the zombies have placed, of course. This mission is the one I remember the most from this playthrough. That's probably because it was by far the most frustrating one. There's 12 mines in total with 12 minutes to hit them all. That sounds like a lot of time, but so many are hard to reach. Many are up on various ramps and when you drive off them you get launched off rather than simply rolling to the other side of it. The only good thing is you get a clue as to where the mines are by the blue dots on the radar in the corner. So like one of the mines was on this angled racetrack way up in the air. If you miss it you're gonna fall right back down. This track had a loop in it which I thought that would be sick to drive through but all it did was lag like crazy and the loop actually slowed me down. I thought I was gonna fall over backwards. Like look at this mine. It's on an elevated platform between two ramps. You have to go off the ramp at an absolutely perfect speed to not fly over it. Trust me when I say this is harder than it looks. Then there's these ones where you have to go off a ramp to a vertical segmented road. Oh my god, it was so hard to land on these. And if you do hit one, you have to go to the bottom to try again for the others. There's no like smooth way to get them all in one motion. Oh, and don't get me started on the one on top of this water slide. There's like a ramp leading up to it, but you can't drive up the ramp at all. I guess it's because it's supposed to have something pulling the rafts up so the wheels don't work. I don't know, but it was really annoying. The only way I could reliably reach it was fling my car towards it from a different road and hope for the best. Finally, there was one floating in midair at these rings. Again, you have to hit the ramp at the perfect angle with the perfect speed. It is so hard and it just, it takes pure trial and error to get it right. It did take some grinding, but I got through this one in the end. With that done, it was on to mission six. Somehow the zombies have piloted a jumbo jet and are trying to crash it into one of the climate zones people are hiding in. We don't really care about saving them, but we do care about the huge cash reward for stopping it. I was really hoping this would be like me flying through the air and smashing into the plane, but nah, it's not that cool. I just had to drive the car up to the air traffic control tower and kill the zombies inside. This was just another instance of having to make a perfect jump. I got on the roof of some building and launched off it. Landing in the tower is super tough, although I guess the devs realized this jump sucked too because they decided to put a useful power up on the roof for us, the kangaroo. This lets you bounce your car anytime you want, even if you're in the air. So I bounced my way inside and blasted all the zombies. Now on to mission 7. I guess the zombies are tired of us running them over, so they put explosives inside of themselves and they're able to blow up our car. I have to complete a race without hitting any zombies. Well, that's what I thought. I ran into one and it only took about a third of my health, but since I had essentially unlimited credits by this point, I could just repair my car every time I hit a zombie. So uh, yeah, this was completely free. I beat it first try. In Mission 8, our guy's going off about something he calls nodding donkeys. What on earth is he talking about? Apparently one of the other Carmageddon racers is using them to steal all the oil so no one can drive. Our goal is to blow up all the nodding donkeys before that happens. Oh, I guess a nodding donkey is one of those oil well things. You know, the ones you see in Texas or whatever. So the goal is just blow up all of those. This one's extremely easy. It's kind of hard to miss them. For mission 9, I guess there's no issues or anything happening. We just felt like having a slalom race down a snowy mountain. So yeah, you're going down the mountain and the checkpoints are super narrow. It's more like a precision driving challenge rather than a race. There's also an insane amount of explosives littered throughout the course, but despite all these really tough challenges, I beat it first try. Well, now this is it. After 9 missions and 30 mind-numbing regular races, it was on to the final mission. It's a fight to the death with the other top Carmageddon racers to earn a trip off planet Earth. Um, yeah, this is basically identical to all the other bland racing levels, except this time the only way to win is kill the other drivers. 
Good thing that's what I was doing the entire game, you know? I guess these people are supposed to be tough to kill, but no, you just back up and ram into them over and over and it works perfectly. I beat this one easier than any of the other ones, honestly. And after you beat it, it shows a cutscene with us driving behind a police car mowing over a bunch of zombies. Our destination is this futuristic looking blimp, which I guess can take us to outer space somehow. We get a final lore update in that we've been taken to Alpha Gutara. This is where the wealthiest people of all live, people who own entire planets. However, Max Damage is quite bored and misses the grind of Carmageddon. Maybe someday he'll return to race once again. But yeah, that's about it. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Carmageddon 64. Nah. Uh, this game, it's honestly pretty forgettable. Apparently the original version on the PC is enjoyed by a lot of people, but man, this version isn't it. I don't know why you have to do so many races instead of just the missions, and the game balance is horrible. It's so easy to win by destroying the other racers, like it's not even close. I don't know why you would try to win the race or try to kill the zombies, it's just so much harder and takes way longer. The music was decent, but the graphics are just horrible and controlling your car is not intuitive whatsoever either. You know, I just don't really see a reason to play this other than maybe you're curious about it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 3 out of 10 for difficulty. It was pretty easy. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. So there are 304 games on the list. Anything could be chosen. Let's see what it is. 3, 2, 1, go. 205. What's that? Oh no. Uh, uh. We are playing Pachinko. Oh my god. This could be really rough. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.